I have today about 50% of my net worth invested in REITs, so needless to say that I'm very bullish on the sector. But you will know that I still regularly post videos on REITs that I would sell, and that's because I'm still objective enough to recognize that not all REITs are worth buying. Overall, valuations are today very low in the REIT sector, but in some cases, those low valuations are simply the result of over leverage, poor management, or troubled assets. Hey everyone, this is Yussi. I run a small investment firm that specializes in REIT investing. And in today's video, I'm going to talk to you about two popular REITs that I would consider selling if I owned them today. And make sure to stick till the very end of this video because I will also share two better alternatives that I'm buying today. But before I get into it, could you please do me a huge favor and click the like button if you like this type of content that will really help me a lot to grow this channel. Thank you so much in advance. So the first read that we'll consider selling is called Easterly Government Properties. Its ticker symbol is DEA. This is a read that owns mostly single tenant office buildings. And this is, in my opinion, the single worst property type to own in 2024. Already back in my private equity days many years ago, we would always avoid these assets. Single tenant office buildings typically attract investors by offering high cap rates and long lease terms with attractive rent escalations during this term as well. But the problem is that once this lease expires, the risk of value destruction is very significant. The tenant knows that if they vacate the property, it will be a nightmare for the landlord to release it and therefore they hold significant bargaining power at the time of the lease renegotiation. Typically, these properties have been built for a specific tenant in mind and therefore, in case of a vacancy, this would lead to significant remodeling cost, leasing expenses, holding cost, and in some cases, it is maybe even impossible to release the property. Before the pandemic, tenant felt comfortable signing long-term leases for large single office buildings, thinking that their office needs wouldn't change significantly in the near term. But then came the pandemic and it taught everyone how to work efficiently while being remote. And to this day, office buildings still have a very low physical occupancy rate of just around 50%. People have switched to working remotely at least a few days a week. And so there simply isn't as much need for office space anymore. I think that this puts single tenant office buildings at significant risk of vacancy in the coming years. And in many cases, the cost of remodeling these properties and releasing them could exceed the current equity value. And then add to that the recent surge in interest rates and tighter lending requirements for office buildings. And you have a perfect nightmare scenario for the landlords of single tenant office buildings. And so not surprisingly, the valuations of these properties are now crashing down. There is a great Twitter profile called Triple Net Investor that has shared a lot of recent transactions in this space just to demonstrate the significant value destruction. Just to give you a few examples, an office tower in Washington DC that was bought in 2019 for 134 million was recently sold for just 30 million representing an 80% haircut in four years. And then to give you a second example, an office complex in Virginia that was acquired in 2020 for 31 million was recently sold for less than 10 million, representing a roughly 70% loss. So the value destruction in this sector is very significant. And remember that most of these REITs also have leverage on their balance sheet. If your LTV is 50% and the value of your property drops by 50%, that will essentially wipe out your entire equity value. This explains why the share prices of single tenant office streets have been collapsing in recent years. Good examples here include Orion Office as well as Office Properties Income Trust. Their share prices have dropped by about 80% and they are today priced at just around 3 to 5 times FFO. But DEA is the exception here. It's today priced at still around 12 times FFO and that's because it has not dropped nearly as much as its other peers. I think that the reason why DEA has been much more resilient in this recent crash is because most of its tenants are government agencies and the market appears to believe that this will protect it from the risk that we mentioned earlier, but I strongly disagree. That's because a recent study showed that the physical occupancy of office buildings leased to government agencies is even lower than that of corporate tenants at around 25% or less. I think that this could be because the government agencies may not care as much about the productivity of their workers as corporate tenants and therefore remote work may be even stickier. But while they may not care as much about the productivity of all their workers, they still care about the cost of their office buildings, especially as budgets get squeezed. 
And the issue here for DEA is that government tenants hold even greater bargaining power than corporate tenants at the time of lease renegotiations because they know that if they vacated the property, the result will be even more devastating for the landlord. Often these properties have been built very specifically for these government agencies and so they have unique characteristics that will cost a lot of money to redevelop for corporate tenants. And then on top of that, these properties have also historically traded at lower cap rates because government agencies were, you know, perceived to be safer tenants. But if you now replace this safer tenant with a riskier corporate tenant, the cap rate is also going to expand, reducing the fair value of the property. This puts DEA in a very tough spot today because it has a lot to lose as its leases now gradually expire. I think that at best it will have to heavily reinvest in its properties and at worst it will face significant vacancies and probably the base case scenario is a mixture of both. I predict that this will eventually force DEA to cut its dividend because today its payout ratio is high and leaves very little room for error. But the issue here is that most shareholders of DEA own this stock specifically for the dividend and so if you now cut it that will likely cause a crash in the share price. Just recently, one of its close peers called Office Properties Income Trust cut its dividend and this caused a 40% drop in its share price in a single day. So that gives you a little taste of the risk that the shareholders of DEA are today facing and priced at 12 times FFO, I think that the risk reward is relatively poor here. And then the second rate that we'll consider selling is called UMH Properties, its ticker symbol is UMH. This is a read that I've owned for many years and I've previously even discussed on this channel, but recently I've changed my mind on the company. This is a read that specializes in manufactured housing communities and overall I really like its assets. But the problem here is that I think that the REIT has poor capital allocation policies and this has caused it to massively underperform its peers, equity lifestyle and some communities over the long run and that's despite using more leverage and following a riskier strategy. So why has it done so much worse for its shareholders? I think that it simply comes down to the fact that the management is not giving enough consideration to its cost of capital when raising new equity to make new investments. They will often issue new common equity at large discounts to its net asset value, as well as preferred equity at high yields to then make new investments that do not cover this cost of capital on day one and as a result shareholders are getting deluded. The management keeps saying that this dilution will eventually turn into accretion once they make improvements to their communities and boost their cash flow. But if you look at the historic track record of the REIT in growing its dividend per share, that will tell you a very different story. Today, the company's dividend per share is still lower than over 20 years ago and that's despite significant rent growth since then. And so that tells me that the company must have poor capital allocation policies. In comparison, its close peers like Sun Communities have been able to consistently grow their dividend because they've been much more mindful about their cost of capital and only raising more equity when they could make new accretive acquisitions. I would add that the company has previously also made investments into other REITs buying their stock, but that's really not what I want to see as a REIT investor. I don't want my REIT management team to play the role of a hedge fund manager. I think that this hurts the market sentiment of the company, increases its cost of capital because it poorly reflects on the quality of the management team, but despite that they refuse to sell these securities because that would be admitting that it was a mistake to buy them in the first place. The last thing that I want to point out here about UMH is that in the investor deck they actually have a slide that shows that their valuation today is compelling and that they are priced at a discount relative to private market values. But despite that they keep on issuing more shares, diluting shareholders despite trading at a discount to the net asset value which is a big no-no in my opinion. If your equity is truly discounted as they claim you will much rather buy back shares than issue new ones. So put simply here, I've lost trust in the capital allocation skills of the management and for this reason I recently sold my position and reinvested these proceeds into another REIT. Now very shortly I want to discuss two better alternatives to these two REITs. Firstly, if you really want to invest in office buildings, I would much rather own Alexandria Real Estate, ticker symbol ARE, than Easterly Government Properties. Alexandria owns some office space but most of its properties are life science buildings with significant lab space associated to the office space and therefore I believe that its fundamentals should be much more resilient than those of other office suites. 
This is well reflected in the company's high occupancy rate as well as its success in significantly increasing its rents at the time of lease expirations. Despite that, the company's share price have crashed with the rest of the office peer group and as a result its valuation is today historically low. We estimate that the rate is priced at a roughly 35% to its net asset value, it offers a 4% dividend yield, it's able to grow its FFO per share by about 5-6% to annually, and so all of that combined together results in a quite favorable risk to reward. And then the second read that in my opinion is a better alternative to UMH properties is its close peer Sun Communities. Just like UMH, Sun Communities also specializes in manufactured housing communities, but most of its properties are higher quality, located in stronger markets that enjoy faster rent growth, stronger barriers to entry, and they also own some other assets like marinas and RV parks, which are today performing really well. They also have a much stronger investment grade rated balance sheet, larger scale, a much longer and better track record than UMH, but despite that their valuation really isn't that much more expensive. I estimate that they are today priced at a roughly 20% discount to the NAV, so there is some upside as the market sentiment of REITs recovers, and then on top of that, I believe that their yield combined with their growth should also get there to roughly double digit total returns or high single digit total returns. So again, combined together, considering that this is a relatively safe REIT, I really like the risk to reward. Now, if you want to access my entire REIT portfolio, you can join my REIT newsletter Hired Landlord for a two-week free trial. It will give you immediate access to my entire real money REIT portfolio. And then once more, if you could please click the like button, that really helped me a lot to grow this channel. Thank you so much in advance and see you at my next one. Bye-bye.